Hello, everybody. Welcome back to In Group Health, the sessions. Um, we are very honored to have you join us. There's a tremendous amount of pain and unrest in our country right now. And during the sessions, we've had people from all over the world join in and join our community. And I just wanted to say that wherever you are, we, we're here for you, we see you, and we will stand with you always in the fight for justice and equality. And we will repeat Black Lives Matter until the day that it never needs to be pointed out again. So we have been hosting these sessions as a way to share some of the wisdom and, and the gifts of the experts and the healers that we have turned to for years. These people are doing incredible work and work that really helps us be present and expand our minds and our perspectives. In addition, we have been raising money for the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. And this is an incredible organization that fights for racial justice through education, litigation, advocacy. They work tirelessly to deliver on their promise of equality for all Americans. And if you are able to, I hope that you will be able to join me in making a donation. So today we are joined by a teacher of mine, a friend of mine, a incredible human being. He has been in my life for over 20 years. His name is Eddie Stern, and he's a yoga teacher and a scholar. Eddie um, is going to join me for a chat. And then we're very lucky that he will lead us in a breathwork exercise and then some yoga. So please welcome Eddie Stern. How are you doing? Um, I'm just like trying to process, stay open, you know, I don't, I just don't know. I don't know that there's anything that I can say. I just, just want to listen and learn yeah. and be dismantled and then see what happens, you know? Yeah. Beautiful. Totally. What, what are the practices that you do to, and why do you do them? Okay. So, uh, yoga is basically a science of two things. One, it's a science of concentration, which means to be present, to be fully present without any other um, distracting activities happening in the field of your mind. And uh, then it's also a science of union, of knowing who you truly are on a deep level as consciousness. Um, so these are the, the twin aspects of yoga, to be fully present with whatever's happening in front of you, what's happening in your mind and to fully truly know who we are. Um, and so there are a number of different practices that yoga talks about in order to achieve that level of being of presence. And I've been thinking about this quite a bit over the past few days because the first limb in the eight different limbs of Ashtanga yoga, which is the type of yoga that I practice is called Yama. And Yama basically means our social interactions. Uh, it's kind of like a social contract. And it's a vow that we take to um, behave in a particular way with the recognition or in recognition that we are all one body here living together on this planet. Like there's one planet and we are all an activity and an expression of this one planet. We are all being here together right now in this moment as one thing. And yet we think that we're separate. And when we think we're separate, then we begin to protect ourselves. We take a defensive stance in so many different types of ways, whether it's our job, 
or our personality, our narrative, our money, you know, our possessions, uh, whatever it might be. Um, and so the first limb of yoga says, okay, let's start to behave in a way and, and shift your perception in a way so that you see we are all part of one thing existing together and take care of that one thing. So the first one is ahimsa, which means an absence of harm, that you refrain from harming other beings. And then the next one is honesty. You try to speak the truth, whether it's your truth or truth in general, and adhere to that level of honesty, which sometimes might be hard to try to express. Um, and then the next is non-stealing. Don't take things that don't belong to you, like the breath of another person's life. Don't take that. That's the worst kind of theft you can have. And the next is um, brahmacharya, which is a sexual responsibility. The entire Me Too movement has been uh, an answer to the harm that men has ca have caused against women through sexual greed and irresponsibility, but even in our own relationships to practice that within, within the relationships we have to. And then last is greed. Um, you know, don't be greedy for the things that um, you think you want, you think you need, but that you don't really. Um, don't be greedy to think that the thing that someone else has is gonna add more to you and complete you because it won't. So what happens with these is that with absence of harm, with honesty, with non-stealing, with sexual responsibility, and an and absence of greed, we begin to take delight in the existence of all beings as equal to our own. And so even if we do feel we're separate, we take delight in the existence of all other beings in the same way we take delight in our own experience of being. And so this is the first step of yoga and it's like, this is the foundation. And asanas and postures and breathing are only supposed to make us strong enough so that we can do that. You know? So that to make the nervous system and our physiology like capable to handle the intensity of honesty. You know? And so <laughs> that's what everyone becomes obsessed about asanas and pranayama and all that. But to make themselves bulletproof or whatever, but no, that's not to be bulletproof. It's to, it's to cause non-harm, it's to be honest, it's to, it's to be in touch with our emotions. Um, and so this yama is called the Mahavrata, the great vow, which is applicable for anybody, regardless of where they're born, the time they're born in, you know, the place of their birth or their status in life meaning, you know, race, religion, creed, beliefs, anything. Like these are the great vows applicable for everybody. And so if all people follow these, or at least followed one of them every once in a while, definitely the world would be a better place. Now, one of the things I've been thinking about as a vow, like a vrata means a vow. And a vow is a promise or a commitment that you make to yourself. And we all know how hard it is to make and keep. It's easy to make a vow, but it's very difficult to keep a vow. Like, you know, you can say, okay, I'm not going to eat sugar anymore, and that's fine for like two days, and then before you know it, you're eating sugar again, or, you know, you quit coffee for a year, and then you start drinking it again, or, or you vow to always tell the truth, and then, you know, after a few days, you find, oh, I'm not telling the truth, I just told a little lie again to myself or to someone else. So a vow is something that, um, that's hard to do, and that's why we make it. If it was easy, we wouldn't have to make a vow. So we make this vow, we expect that it's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. And then as we do it, we stand there with the challenge and we accept it. So we literally stand present for difficulty. We stand present for a challenge with all of our heart and mind and being. And we, we, we allow the difficulty and, and the uncomfortability with it to be there. We stay present with discomfort. And that's something that I think I'm trying to practice now, just to be really present with discomfort. And the discomfort is knowing um, and feeling the experience of all of my black and brown brothers and sisters in this country and around the world 
who have suffered immensely in ways that I'll never understand, not in this life at least. And so, um, so that's a practice right there. Um, every morning when we do the breathing practices on Instagram, uh, when we begin them, you know, we take our first breath as an offering for George Floyd. And we take our, a breath for an offering for everyone who's lost their lives, has, has their breath stolen through violence and murder. And, um, you know, to, in a certain way, many of us are, and many of those who are, are living and have not been killed, have also had their breath taken away from them when they lose a loved one or um, just through, you know, the, the trauma and the oppression. So um, that's one practice. And then uh, the other practices such as postures and breathing, those help keep us stable and grounded and able to deal with um, standing firm. Mm -hmm. The quest to know who we are and the quest for justice. And things like mantras, those keep the mind busy. And, you know, and one nice thing about mantras and prayer is that um, there's a vibrational quality to them. Um, whether you're singing Amazing Grace or whether you're chanting Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha, you're immersing yourself in the vibration. And the vibration is doing something to regulate your nervous system. And also, and when you regulate your nervous system, you regulate your emotions and your mental balance and everything. And then, like you're, you're ready, you're ready to face the world. You know, you don't go into a church, a synagogue, or a yoga school and practice or pray for an hour every morning. So you're done with everything. You do it so that you're ready to be with yourself and face the day, and whatever comes your way. So I think that uh, right now I'm really trying to frame all the teachings with people. Like we need to do this as a preparation for the pain of life. Um, and be present for that pain and difficulty and the joys, of course, and the successes too. Um, and experience all of the joys and successes and successes not with the expectation that they're going to last forever. You know, they won't. They're, it's going to be up and down. They're going to come and go. And our mind needs to be um, supple enough to not try to hold on to either of those things, not to try to hold on to the pain, not to try to hold on to the success. For the joy but continue to be present and to love i don't know you know that was so beautiful eddie you're just i know you don't call yourself a leader but i sure think you're a leader no i don't think i am but um but uh, i like people you know and I like to be with people and talk and discuss and learn things and expand my understanding. Oh my goodness. Well, I went so off the questions that they <laughs> ask you. <laughs> um, I think I would love for the audience to also know where where you are on Instagram, where where people can can follow you if they want to join in in the mornings. Sure, uh, my Instagram is at Eddie Stern, E D D I E S T E R N, and my website is eddiestern.com, and the links to all the classes are right there on the website. And um, you know everything is free or by donation. We just are encouraging people to come practice. We have beginner classes on Saturdays on Fridays at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, we do a Yoga Sutra philosophy course, which is open to everyone. And um, then in the mornings early, we do the chanting and pranayama practices. Yeah. And you also, I would love for you to just talk a little bit about your book as well, which is so brilliant. And and if, if, if everybody wants to dive a little bit deeper, they can also listen to our conversation on the Goop podcast where we really got into the, the depth of your book, but just mention a little bit about it. Sure. Thanks. Uh, it's called One Simple Thing, and we look at the science of yoga, how it can transform your life. And it's basically a look at how yoga 
uh, is a neuroregulation practice that affects uh, the deepest parts of our nervous system, which help to bring us back into balance to restore balance and help tune our, our system so we know what balance feels like. And whenever we need to find it again, we have the tools to do so. And so it looks at the philosophy and the science behind that and how yoga is really uh, a new science for, um, I mean, it's an old science, but it can be looked at in uh, through the lens of modern science as a really effective tool for you know, improving cardiovascular health, improving digestive health, improving mental health, improving emotional health, all through working on the same basic types of mechanisms, uh, which is the autonomic nervous system and um, the effects that that has on us. So philosophy and science both together. I don't know if I explained it well. I'm not a good soundbite person. As you see. It was perfect. It was, I highly recommend it. It's an absolutely brilliant book. Um, so what, so what are you going to, to take us through today? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a really simple breathing practice, um, which helps to balance the branches of the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic and parasympathetic. Uh, these are the branches of the nervous system that help us perceive safety and threat both together. And during times when things are really troubled, like the times we're in now, even starting from COVID, the sympathetic branch of the nervous system becomes a little bit more active because we need to perceive that around us to know how to keep ourselves safe, whether it's washing hands or wearing a mask or not going outside, getting tested, um, whatever it might be, and worrying about other people who might have contact, worrying about first, you know, frontline workers, all these things keep our stress response active. And so whether we know it or not, most of the the world was already in a hyperactive stress mode before COVID. Now it's even more in this type of mode. So we're going to do really simple breathing practice to downregulate the sympathetic nervous system and to help the relaxation response become more prominent, um, to cool everything down. You know, stress feels the speed. And when we start to panic, things, our mind speeds up. And we know that speed is also related to heat. Like if you're boiling a pot of water, the fire under the water doesn't make uh, the water just get hot. It makes the molecules of the water speed up. And so as you go faster and faster and faster, the water gets hot and it boils. Same thing happens to us. Our mind speeds up, our emotions speed up, our palms get sweaty, our heart beats faster. You know, we get warm all over the body and um, that's speed. So what we're doing with the breathing, we're slowing everything down, we're pressing on the brake. And then after that, we're gonna do um, some sun salutations uh, like we've been for so many years. And then we're gonna do a couple of standing poses, one or two simple seated poses, and then a two minute closing meditate. It'll be a 30 minute practice, and it'll be basically something that people could do every day if they want to, if they're looking for a practice. Fantastic. I can't wait to do it. I can't wait. I need some Eddie Stern mat time so bad. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Eddie, thank you so much. Thank you for being here and doing this, especially given just how the world is falling apart. No, oh, thank you. Thank you for having me on. And I know that it feels like the world is falling apart, but um, you know, sometimes things have to fall apart a little to be put together better. And we all I agree with you. You know, our world was not put together well. There's so much inequality violence and so much injustice in the yeah. direction. So the world obviously wasn't put together well. So things needed to be, you know, they need to fall apart. They need to be a little bit dismantled so that we can um, use our, our brains and our hearts to build something better. Yeah. And I think we will. Isn't this what the world has been doing for thousands of years? Rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding. Yes. Maybe one day we'll get it right. You know? We're we're overdue. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. It's an honor. Of course. It's our immense pleasure and honor to have you on.
Hello, and welcome to this all levels yoga and breathing class. This will be a 30 minute practice comprised of some lying down poses, some standing up poses, a few sun salutations, a couple of seated poses, and some slow breathing to finish. Let's begin by lying on your backs with your legs stretched out in front of you, the feet together and the legs together, and the hands flat on the ground by your sides. We're going to begin with a lying down sun salutation. Inhale your arms over your head to the floor behind you. Keep the arms up over the head and we're going to breathe here three times. One, this is just like a nice long stretch before we begin any of the asanas. Two, And as you exhale, slowly lower your hands back down to the floor next to your sides. Please bend your knees so your feet are flat on the floor, about hip width apart. You'll feel a little arch in your lower back. Pull the lower belly gently in. And as you inhale, lift your hips up off the ground, just a couple of inches, doesn't matter how high. Stay here and breathe five times. One. Two, three, four, and exhale, slowly lay the back onto the floor. Stretch your legs out one by one. Keep your legs and your feet together. Inhale, reach your arms up towards the ceiling and over your head to the floor behind you. Keep the hands spread shoulder width apart, point your toes and breathe through your nose. One, two, and exhale, slowly lower your arms down by your sides. Please bend your knees again so your feet are flat on the floor, about hip width apart. Tuck your hips slightly under so your lower back is flat on the floor. And as you exhale, you're gonna lift your Head and shoulders up off the ground and reach your hands towards your heels and then look towards the navel. And then if you feel comfortable here, shift your gaze to look straight up into the sky or the ceiling and breathe. One, two, three, four, and exhale, slowly come down. Straighten your legs out, feet together, and we'll do one more lying down sun salute. Inhale the arms over your head to the floor behind you. Keep the arms spread shoulder width apart and breathe. One, two, pull the lower belly slightly in, press the backs of the knees a little to the floor and exhale the arms back down by your sides. Let's bend your right knee and place your right ankle right above the knee and let the right knee fall open to the side. This is to open the front of your right hip flexor. Inhale the arms over your head to the floor behind you. Try flexing or pointing your right foot, whichever, your left foot, whichever is most comfortable. Stay here and breathe. One. Try to hook your right foot a little bit over your knee so the leg stays active. Two, three, four, and exhale the arms back down by your sides and straighten your right leg out onto the floor. Bend your left knee and cross your left ankle right above your right knee. Point your right toes. Inhale your arms over your head to the floor behind you. Keep the arms shoulder width apart and stay here and breathe. One, two, three, four, and exhale the arms back down by your sides. Straighten your left leg out onto the floor. Let the palms rest open. Breathe a slow inhale and a slow exhale. Let's bend your knees in towards your chest. 
cross your ankles, hold on to the sides of the knees, and then we're going to rock back and forth on the spine three times. Rocking up and back, two, and three. Inhale, rock up to a seated position, and we'll do a couple of seated down spine opening poses. The first one is going to be a rounding of your spine back and a pushing of the chest forward. I'll show you that from the side angle as well. As you exhale, you're gonna round your spine back. And as you inhale, you're gonna push the chest forward. But my head doesn't go back. My chin stays parallel to the floor the whole time. Exhale back, inhale forward, do this six times. Exhale back, inhale forward, exhale back, inhale forward, exhale back, inhale forward, exhale back, inhale forward, one more, exhale back, inhale forward, and come to sit straight. Breathe a long inhale, and a long exhale. Okay, next, going to bring your hands onto your shoulders, so your thumbs are pressing the shoulders, and the elbows are relaxed out to the sides. Inhale, turn to the left. Exhale, turn to the right, six times. Inhale, left. Exhale, right. Inhale, left. Exhale, right, three more. Inhale left, exhale right, inhale left, exhale right, one more, inhale left, exhale right, inhale come back to center, and exhale rest the arms down, roll the shoulders, long inhale, and a long exhale. Bring the thumbs back onto the shoulders, elbows relaxed down to the side. Inhale, lean your body to the left, and exhale, lean the body a little to the right. Inhale to the left, exhale right, inhale left, exhale right, three more, inhale left, exhale right, Inhale left, exhale right, last one. Inhale left, exhale right. Inhale, come back up to center, and exhale, rest the hands on the knees. Long, slow inhale, and a slow exhale. And now we're gonna do a gentle twist. You're gonna bring your right hand behind your body as if you're gonna reach for your left thigh. Bring your left arm onto the knee, your hand onto the knee, keep the arm straight, lift the spine and twist. And breathe here five times. One, two, three, four, five. Release to center, swing the left hand behind you like you're gonna reach for your right thigh. Bring your right hand onto your left knee, lift your spine, and twist, and breathe. One, two, three, pull the lower belly slightly in, four, and five. Inhale, come back to center, hands on the knees, slow inhale, and a slow exhale. Now we'll come to a standing position. Now we begin the sun salutations. We're gonna do four of these. You're gonna start standing straight with your feet together, toes touching, the chest a little bit up, and gazing straight ahead. As you inhale, reach your arms straight forward over your head, press the palms together, and look up towards your thumbs. And as you exhale, open the arms wide out to the side and bend forward, bringing your hands down by your feet and resting the head down 
and bend your knees as much as you need to to get your hands onto the floor. As you inhale next, lengthen your chest forward. And as you exhale, step your feet back so you are in a high plank pose. And then we're gonna lower the knees to the floor, lift the chest a little, and then lower the chest down to the floor. From here, inhale, come into a very low cobra, just to strengthen the um, posterior chain of back muscles. You can gaze gently forward, and then we're gonna push back onto the hands and knees, and lift the hips up, coming into downward facing dog. In this position, we're gonna breathe five times. You can look at your hands for a moment, make sure they're shoulder width apart, and your middle fingers are pointing forward. And you're pressing down a little below your index finger, and your hips are gently pulling back behind you. Breathe. Two, through the nose. Three, four, and five. Look up at your hands and bend your knees and walk your feet forward up to the hands and lift the chest up. Exhale, bend your head down towards your legs. And then inhale, reach your chest forward, the arms out to the side, stand up with the hands over the head, and exhale the arms straight forward down by your sides. Here, do that same thing one more time. Inhale, the arms up over the head and look at your thumbs. Exhale, swan dive the arms open, pull your hips back behind you as you bend down and rest your head down towards your legs. Inhale, extend your chest forward, and as you exhale, step your feet back to a high plank pose. Then we're gonna lower the knees to the floor, you're gonna lift the chest a little, and then exhale, bend your chest down in between your hands. Inhale, come into a low cobra pose. Exhale, push back on the hands and knees, lift your hips up, check your hands, put your head down, and breathe. One, feel the breath opening the body. Two, three, four, Five. Look up at your hands, walk your feet up to the hands, lift your chest, but keep your hands on the floor, and then exhale, come into a forward fold, resting your head down towards your legs. As you inhale, reach your chest forward, stand up and bring the arms out to the side over your head, and exhale, the hands back down by your sides. Here we're going to do two more of these. Yegum, inhale the arms up. Dway, exhale, fold the arms open and come down. Inhale, lift the chest forward. And this time as you exhale, bend the knees a little and hop your feet back behind you into a high plank. And then if you can, lower down into a push-up position or lower your knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, come forward now into a higher cobra or upward dog, and then exhale, push back into downward dog, and breathe. One, two, three, four, Five. Bend your knees and look at your hands, and then try to hop your feet right up to the hands. Lift the chest straight in the arms, and exhale, bend your head down towards your legs. Inhale, stand up, reaching your arms out to the side and up over your head, and exhale the arms straight down by your sides. Last one. Yankum, inhale the arms up. Way, exhale, forward fold over the legs. Put your hands on the floor and rest your head down. Inhale, lengthen your chest forward, forward. The hands stay on the floor. Bend your knees and hop your feet back. And then lower down, knees, chest, and chin, or into a low push-up. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. 
and then exhale, downward facing dog, and breathe. So if you have any trouble with your wrists or with your shoulders in downward dog, you can also rest in child's pose. One, two, three, four, pull your hips a little back behind you, five, good, bend the knees, look at your hands, try to hop your feet up to the hands, straighten the legs and lift the chest forward, exhale, come down into a forward fold, inhale, come up and reach your arms out to the side as you come up, look up at your thumbs, and exhale the hands down by your sides. Breathe in a long inhale, and breathe out a long exhale. Okay, now we do a few standing poses. Next, we move on to a few standing poses to continue to strengthen the waist and lengthen the legs. We'll begin by jumping your feet hip width apart for Padanga Ustasana. Inhale the breath and tuck your hips slightly under. And as you exhale, bend forward, grab hold of your big toes with two fingers. Inhale, lift your chest forward, and exhale, bend the head down, keeping your elbows back. We'll stay here and breathe five times. One, two, three. Keep the head and shoulders relaxed. Four, just try to straighten the knees a little and pull the lower belly in. And five. Inhale, lift your chest forward, stay here and exhale, and then step on your hands, bringing your palms flat under your feet, and your big toes come to the fleshy part of your thumb. Again, inhale the breath, and then exhale, bend your chest forward, rest the head down and rest your elbows. Feel like you're leaning a little bit towards your toes. Straighten the knees and pull the lower belly in. One, five breaths. Two, three, four, five. Inhale the head up. Stay here and exhale. Let go of your hands. Stand up and hop your feet together. Next, we're going to do triangle pose. So bend the knees, hop your feet about three feet apart, and turn your right toes out to the side. Now, there are many different variations of the triangle pose. Uh, we're going to do one today that I particularly like, where you're going to turn your hips to face a little bit towards your right leg, and then slide both of your hands down your leg. Bring both of your hands to the floor on the inside of your foot. If you can't reach your hands to the floor, keep your hands right up on your leg. Just go as far forward as you can. And then from here, you're going to open your left arm up in the air and turn to gaze at the hand. Your, right, your left hip comes a little forward as your chest comes open, and you breathe. One, two, three, four, five. And let your left hand come down. And now you're just gonna swivel and bring your right arm up in the air, coming into a twist. If your hand is up on your leg, then you come into the twist on your leg. And if your arm's not comfortable over your head, bend your arm behind your back. Two, three, four, straight knees, and five. Bring your right hand down onto your leg, lift your chest forward, and then if you need to, bend your knee, come back up to stay. Turn your feet so your left toe is pointing out. The right toe is pointing just a little bit in, but not too much. Turn your hips so you're facing towards your left leg. Put your hands on your thigh and slide your hands down your leg as far as they comfortably go. If your hands reach the floor, then they reach the floor. Inhale your right arm up, push your right hip slightly forward, and then open the chest back and breathe. One, two, three, four, and five. Exhale your right hand to the floor, and then bring your left arm up in the air, coming into a twist. If 
You can also bend the arm back behind you. One, two, three, four, open your chest, and five. Bring the left hand down, bring your hands onto the foot, but keep them on the floor, lift your chest forward, and either with a straight knee or bending your knee, inhale, come back up, open the arms, exhale, jump your feet back together. Stretch your arms out in front of you. Rise up onto your toes. Bend your knees slowly, slowly, slowly. Come down as far as you comfortably can. And then if possible, bring yourself all the way down into a squat. Resting on your heels. Bring your hands to the floor. Sit down onto the ground. Straighten your legs out in front of you. Okay, I'll show you this one slightly to the side. We'll do one forward bend before we go into the breathing practice. Janu Shirashasana, bend your right foot so it's flat against your thigh. The knee can be a little bit open. If you have any knee discomfort, keep your foot closer to your knee. Turn to face your leg. Reach your hands to hold on to the tops of your toes or the side of your foot, wherever you can comfortably reach. Inhale, lift the chest, and then exhale, bend down over the leg. Rotate your chest a little bit so your ribs are coming over your left leg and breathe. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale the chest up, exhale there, inhale to sit. Straighten your right leg out. And now you're going to bend your left knee. You're going to bring your left foot close into the thigh, as close to the groin as you can. Again, if you have any knee discomfort, keep your foot a little closer to the knee. Turn to face your leg. Reach to hold on to the top of the If you can't reach the toes, just hold on to your leg. Inhale the breath to lengthen your spine up. And then exhale, bend down over your leg. And breathe. One, rotate your ribs a little towards over the thigh. Two, three, four, five. Inhale the chest up. Stay there and exhale. Tighten your waist and inhale, sit up. And now you can cross your legs and we will prepare for the closing deep breathing sequence. For the final deep breathing, you can sit either in a comfortable cross-legged position like this, or if you need to, you can sit up on a pillow or on a block. You can do the half lotus if you're comfortable in half lotus. You can do full lotus if you're comfortable in full lotus. Any cross-legged position will do. I'll demonstrate in the half lotus today. Reach your hands behind your back and hold on to your wrist. And as you exhale, bend your head forward towards the floor and rest the head down. If your head does not reach the floor, stretch your arms out on the floor in front of you and extend the body forward and down. Breathe here five times. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, lift the chest forward, and as you exhale, you can sit back up show you this next one from the side. You're gonna bring your hands onto the floor behind you, about 12 inches back, shoulder width apart. Lift the chest up and straighten the arms. And if you have no neck discomfort, you can rest your head gently back so you're looking up at the ceiling. And if that's uncomfortable for your neck, keep your chin towards your chest. In either position, continue to lift the chest. And we'll breathe five times. One, two, three, four, and five. Push off from your fingers to sit back up straight. Let your hands rest on your knees, the spine just comfortably straight, not too, too straight. And bring your awareness to your breathing. Feel the breath coming in and feel the breath going out. 
and enjoy the process of breathing like you would enjoy your favorite food or listening to your favorite David Bowie song or smelling the scent of something that you really love, a perfume that you like, or the smell of a rose. Enjoy the sensation of breathing and enjoy the process of breathing like you would enjoy any of those things. And you notice how automatically the breath will grow just a little bit longer. And so now you're going to consciously keep your breath at that little bit of a deeper volume. A little bit of a longer inhale than normal and a little bit of a longer exhale than normal just enjoying the sensation of the breath. And then draw the spine a little straighter. Keep the chin slightly, slightly down. And we're gonna slowly begin to elongate the breath. So you're inhaling for five or six seconds and you're exhaling for five or six seconds. So mentally count on your own, inhaling, one, two, three, four, five, and exhaling, one, two, three, four, five. You can also do this for six if you'd like. We'll do this for about a minute on your own. You don't have to breathe your longest, deepest breath. Just breathe a long, full breath. There should always be a little bit of room at the end of your inhale so that if you needed to breathe a little more, you could. And a little room at the end of your exhale so if you needed to exhale a little bit more, you could. So you don't fully, completely fill the lungs and fully, completely empty them. You fill them 70 or 80% and you empty them 70 to 80%. The main thing we're looking for is a smoothness and an evenness to the inhale and exhale. If you want to tighten your glottis or tighten the throat very slightly to make a hissing sound as you breathe, sometimes called the ocean breath, you can do that and that helps to regulate the flow of the breath. It's the same type of sound you would make if you were whispering the sound of ah, like ah, but through your nose or fogging a mirror. Try for about a minute on your own. Smoothness of breath. One more. And then relax your breathing and relax the spine a little. Just sit quietly for a moment, feeling the calmness of the body and the calmness of the breathing. Stretch your legs out in front of you, and you're gonna lay down on your back, and you're gonna rest for just about a minute or so. Lie down on the back, let the palms rest open, and let the feet rest open to the sides. If you're more comfortable with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor to rest, you can do that too with the knees together. 
The wise just lie calmly for a moment, let the body settle in. Let your awareness fill the limbs of your body. Becoming aware of your feet and your legs. Aware of the pelvis and your trunk. Aware of the hands and the arms, shoulders, and aware of the muscles of the face softening. After you feel well rested, you can wiggle the fingers and toes, rotate the wrists and the ankles, stretch the arms, stretch the legs and the body however you'd like to, bend the knees into the chest, cross the ankles, and then you can roll yourself up to a seated position. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this is a simple, about 35 minute long or so, yoga practice that you can do. You can take parts of those practice and do any of those parts independently, or you can do the entire thing together. So yoga is meant to be practiced every day or at least several times a week, but it should fit into your life in a way that works for you. So you can either do longer practices or shorter practices. The main thing is that we're focusing on three basic things. Number one, uh, smooth movements of the body. Number two, smooth movement of breath. And number three, keeping your awareness present with how you're moving and with how you're breathing. And when all those three things tie together, then your awareness moves inward and then you are practicing yoga.